a lot of the focus to going full-time RV living seems to be on getting rid of stuff, which is a great thing to do. But there are actually uncomplicated, simple, and fun things to also do to prepare for transitioning to full-time RV living. This is a second video in a series that talks about simple things you can do to transition to full-time RV living. Check it out. So this one takes a look at not only full-time RV living, but also the if you're gonna be vlogging on a regular basis. Now, if you have a Canon N50, this works great. It's one of the best cameras you can use for vlogging. If you look, there are a lot of different YouTubers that use it. It's a great camera, it's got a flip out, and you can use it in a lot of different ways. It's very versatile, small, mirrorless, uh, relatively inexpensive, and great to use. So if you're already, you're already using your Canon M50, there's a lot of things you can get into, but there's also a lot, a lot of tech you can get sucked into. When you do these simple practices, it gives you a chance to use your Canon M50 in ways you're gonna be using it when you're on the road anyway. Even if you're not on the road, it just gives you a way to practice using your Canon M50 and learn in a simple and effective way. This practice technique is about going to a park and making a meal. Now I know that sounds very simple. Hear me out, because it actually is very good on a couple different levels. So visual storytelling is gonna capture people's interest a lot more. Storytelling can be complicated when you look at it in terms of, okay, how am I gonna tell this story? What kind of stories am I gonna tell? And so on. So instead of looking at it that way, look at something simple that you do on a regular basis that you can actually tell the story of. Meaning that you can actually capture the visual elements of. So when you're making a meal, when you're traveling to some place, those are events that have known sequences that you can actually capture. Look at those known sequences and look at the points where it's gonna be most interesting for the viewer. And then think, okay, what's the angle I can get to make it the most interesting? And then one thing I've done uh, sometimes is to basically, instead of going, okay, what's the angle that's most interesting? What are the best three angles? So you can go from those different, at least three different angles. And when you do that, you have more choices when you're editing. So it gives you a chance to go, okay, what angles do I think are more most interesting at this point in time? But later when you're editing, you realize, oh, well, although that was good, these other, this other one is actually better. And you wouldn't have gotten that if you hadn't have stretched yourself to do at least three different views from an angle. And when you do these views, you're only uh, taking your camera, let's say, and you're, you're sucking into the view and only uh, taking like, let's say, a couple seconds because you're, you're getting that view and you're giving them a visual, but you're not like taking a huge amount of time because oftentimes with visual storytelling, you're coming in, you see a view, and then you move on to the next view. So it's much easier to take three different views when you have just a quick sequence of events taking place. So then it becomes much easier to practice those different angles and it stretches your mind and you start to see the possibilities. So going to a park and cooking a meal is something that's very simple but that simplicity in the natural sequences of events allows you to capture it in fun ways and also just get you to look at what you can do. Now, the other part of this is you start to realize what kind of tech you'll actually use versus the tech that you might uh, get enamored by uh, having watched so many YouTube videos. So it, it really gets you on a couple different angles. Now, now, with full-time RV living, of course, it automatically, cooking a meal at a park also gives you the chance to basically be in public and cook a meal. And although this might sound simple, being out in public and cooking a meal can sometimes be socially awkward. And when you get over that awkwardness and you realize, okay, what do I need <laughs> to actually cook outside? It gets you asked those questions and it becomes much easier when you do this over and over again to basically when it comes time to transition, you have that down. And when you have something as core as cooking a meal down, it becomes much easier to take on the wave of different emotions and other things you might be uh, getting used to when you transition to full-time RV living. So it's a great way to do it. And when you do it over and over again, you get a lot more comfortable. And that comfortableness goes a long way to making a transition easier than feeling like a fish out of water. So it's a great way to go and do this. It's very simple, but it's good to do. Now, when you do this and you're doing it over and over again, the other benefit to doing it with your camera is that you get, you get better and better. But instead of getting overwhelmed, here's another thing you can consider uh, doing instead. If you're like me, you get kind of frustrated, like, oh, I want to do this and this and that. When you do a video and you go and review it, 
Instead of getting overwhelmed by all the possible things you could do better, just choose one thing, one thing, uh, maximum two, but I usually just go with one. You can try it yourself and see what, see how, how you do, but I pick one thing to do better and I focus on that one thing the next time I create a video. And since you're gonna be doing the uh, same thing, go to a park and cook a meal, it becomes much easier to kind of like go through that process and pick that one thing because you start to get used to it. And you get better and better and better without getting so overwhelmed and frustrated. It's a great process. It works with Facebook Lives, but it also works when doing this as well. So I highly recommend it. And if you're into Facebook Lives, I would definitely do that. I have a video on that actually, but regardless, it's a simple process and the simplicity allows for greater focus. This is so awesome to do. And I know, go to a park, cook a meal. You can, uh, obviously you can switch this up, um, you know, making coffee, doing any number of simple tasks and then being able to see it in different ways. Go on to YouTube, see what other people are doing, get inspiration for the next time you do. So much fun actually. And so it's something you can do over and over again and definitely help you not only with getting used to vlogging and visual storytelling, but also uh, transitioning to full-time RV living. So if you're gonna have a YouTube channel and you're full-time RV living, you might as well get used to doing this on a regular basis now than if you try to do it all at once. If you found this helpful, be sure to give it a like. And subscribe because you have some more videos to go through ideas on practices you can do that help you not only tra transition to full-time RV living when you actually get there, but also just make your life and other things a little bit more fun and interesting. So look for that. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.